The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC is an intergovernmental body of the United Nations, dedicated to providing the world with an objective, scientific view of climate change and its political and economic impacts. It was established in 1988 by the World Meteorological Organization WMO and the United Nations Environment Programme UNEP, and later endorsed by the United Nations General Assembly. Membership is open to all members of the WMO and UN. The IPCC produces reports that support the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change UNFCCC, the main international treaty on climate change. The objective of the UNFCCC is to "...stabilize greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere at a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system." IPCC reports cover the scientific, technical and socio-economic information relevant to understanding the scientific basis of risk of human-induced climate change, its potential impacts and options for adaptation and mitigation." The IPCC does not carry out original research, nor does it monitor climate or related phenomena itself. Rather, it assesses published literature including peer-reviewed and non-peer-reviewed sources. Thousands of scientists and other experts contribute on a voluntary basis to writing and reviewing reports, which are then reviewed by governments. IPCC reports contain a summary for policymakers, which is subject to line-by-line -line approval by delegates from all participating governments. Typically, this involves the governments of more than 120 countries. The IPCC provides an internationally accepted authority on climate change, producing reports which have the agreement of leading climate scientists and the consensus of participating governments. The 2007 Nobel Peace Prize was shared, in equal parts, between the IPCC and Al Gore. Topic. Origins and aims The IPCC developed from an international scientific body, the Advisory Group on Greenhouse Gases set up in 1985 by the International Council of Scientific Unions, the United Nations Environment Programme and the World Meteorological Organization to provide recommendations based on current research. This small group of scientists lacked the resources to cover the increasingly complex interdisciplinary nature of climate science. The United States Environmental Protection Agency and State Department wanted an international convention to agree restrictions on greenhouse gases, and the conservative Reagan administration was concerned about unrestrained influence from independent scientists or from United Nations bodies including UNEP and the WMO. The U.S. government was the main force in forming the IPCC as an autonomous intergovernmental body in which scientists took part both as experts on the science and as official representatives of their governments, to produce reports which had the firm backing of all the leading scientists worldwide researching the topic, and which then had to gain consensus agreement from every one of the participating governments. In this way, it was formed as a hybrid between a scientific body and an intergovernmental political organization. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change produces and assesses evidence on climate change. They produce many assessments and in each of the assessment reports, it is uncovered which they have found to be the most dominant in contributing to climate change since the last report was conducted. The IPCC has adopted and published, Principles Governing IPCC Work, which states that the IPCC will assess the risk of human-induced climate change, its potential impacts, and possible options for prevention. This document also states that IPCC will do this work by assessing, on a comprehensive, objective, open and transparent basis the scientific, technical and socio-economic information relevant to understanding the scientific basis of these topics. The principles also state that IPCC reports should be neutral with respect to policy, although they may need to deal objectively with scientific, technical and socio-economic factors relevant to the application of particular policies. Organization Korean economist Ho Sung Lee has been the chair of the IPCC since October 8, 2015, following the election of the new IPCC Bureau. 
Before this election, the IPCC was led by his vice chair Ismail El Ghazuli, who was designated acting chair after the resignation of Rajendra K. Pachori in February 2015. The previous chairs were Rajendra K. Pachori, elected in May 2002, Robert Watson in 1997, and Bert Bolin in 1988. The chair is assisted by an elected bureau including vice chairs, working group co-chairs, and a secretariat. The IPCC panel is composed of representatives appointed by governments and organizations. Participation of delegates with appropriate expertise is encouraged. Plenary sessions of the IPCC and IPCC working groups are held at the level of government representatives. Non-governmental and intergovernmental organizations may be allowed to attend as observers. Sessions of the IPCC Bureau, workshops, expert and lead authors meetings are by invitation only. Attendance at the 2003 meeting included 350 government officials and climate change experts. After the opening ceremonies, closed plenary sessions were held. The meeting report states there were 322 persons in attendance at sessions with about seven-eighths of participants being from governmental organizations. There are several major groups. IPCC panel, meets in plenary session about once a year and controls the organization's structure, procedures, and work program. The panel is the IPCC corporate entity. Chair, elected by the panel. Secretariat, oversees and manages all activities. Supported by UNIP and WMO. Bureau, elected by the panel. Chaired by the chair, 30 members include IPCC vice chairs, co-chairs and vice chairs of working groups and task force. Working groups, each has two co-chairs, one from the developed and one from developing world, and a technical support unit. Working Group 1, assesses scientific aspects of the climate system and climate change. Co-chairs, Valerie Masson del Mott and Panmao Jai, Working Group 2, assesses vulnerability of socio-economic and natural systems to climate change, consequences, and adaptation options. Co-chairs, Hans Otto Portner and Deborah Roberts Working Group 3, assesses options for limiting greenhouse gas emissions and otherwise mitigating climate change. Co-chairs, Priyadarshi R. Shukla and Jim Ski Task Force on National Greenhouse Gas Inventories The IPCC receives funding through the IPCC Trust Fund, established in 1989 by the United Nations Environment Program UNIP and the World Meteorological Organization WMO. Costs of the Secretary and of Housing the Secretariat are provided by the WMO, while UNIP meets the cost of the Depute Secretary. Annual cash contributions to the trust fund are made by the WMO, by UNIP, and by IPCC members. The scale of payments is determined by the IPCC panel, which is also responsible for considering and adopting by consensus the annual budget. The organization is required to comply with the financial regulations and rules of the WMO. Topic: <laughs> Assessment reports. The IPCC has published five comprehensive assessment reports reviewing the latest climate science, as well as a number of special reports on particular topics. These reports are prepared by teams of relevant researchers selected by the Bureau from government nominations. Expert reviewers from a wide range of governments, IPCC observer organizations and other organizations are invited at different Stages to comment on various aspects of the drafts, the IPCC published its first assessment report in 1990, a supplementary report in 1992, a second assessment report in 1995, a third assessment report in 2001, a fourth assessment report in 2007 and a fifth assessment report in 2014. The IPCC is currently preparing the sixth assessment report AR6, which will be completed in 2022. Each assessment report is in three volumes, corresponding to working groups I, II, and III. The bare phrase, the IPCC report, is often used to mean the working group one report, which covers the basic science of climate change. Topic. Scope and preparation of the reports. The IPCC does not carry out research nor does it monitor climate-related data. Lead authors of IPCC reports assess the available information about climate change based on published sources. 
According to IPCC guidelines, authors should give priority to peer-reviewed sources. Authors may refer to non-peer-reviewed sources the gray literature, provided that they are of sufficient quality. Examples of non-peer-reviewed sources include model results, reports from government agencies and non-governmental organizations, and industry journals. Each subsequent IPCC report notes areas where the science has improved since the previous report and also notes areas where further research is required. There are generally three stages in the review process. Expert review, six to eight weeks. Government, expert review. Government review of Summaries for policymakers Overview chapters Synthesis report review comments are in an open archive for at least five years. There are several types of endorsement which documents receive. Approval. Material has been subjected to detailed, line-by-line -line discussion and agreement. Working group summaries for policymakers are approved by their working groups. Synthesis report summary for policymakers is approved by panel. Adoption. Endorsed section by section and not line by line. Panel adopts overview chapters of methodology reports. Panel adopts IPCC synthesis report. Acceptance. Not been subject to line by line discussion and agreement, but presents a comprehensive, objective, and balanced view of the subject matter. Working groups accept their reports. Task force reports are accepted by the panel. Working group summaries for policymakers are accepted by the panel after group approval. The panel is responsible for the IPCC and its endorsement of reports allows it to ensure they meet IPCC standards. There have been a range of commentaries on the IPCC's procedures, examples of which are discussed later in the article. See also IPCC summary for policymakers. Some of these comments have been supportive, while others have been critical. Some commentators have suggested changes to the IPCC's procedures. Topic. Authors Each chapter has a number of authors who are responsible for writing and editing the material. A chapter typically has two coordinating lead authors, 10 to 15 lead authors, and a somewhat larger number of contributing authors. The coordinating lead authors are responsible for assembling the contributions of the other authors, ensuring that they meet stylistic and formatting requirements, and reporting to the working group chairs. Lead authors are responsible for writing sections of chapters. Contributing authors prepare text, graphs or data for inclusion by the lead authors. Authors for the IPCC reports are chosen from a list of researchers prepared by governments and participating organizations, and by the Working Group, Task Force Bureau, as well as other experts known through their published work. The choice of authors aims for a range of views, expertise and geographical representation, ensuring representation of experts from developing and developed countries and countries with economies in transition. Topic. First assessment report. The IPCC first assessment report was completed in 1990, and served as the basis of the UNFCCC. The Executive Summary of the WGI Summary for Policymakers Report says they are certain that emissions resulting from human activities are substantially increasing the atmospheric concentrations of the greenhouse gases, resulting on average in an additional warming of the Earth's surface. They calculate with confidence that CO2 has been responsible for over half the enhanced greenhouse effect. They predict that under a business as usual bow scenario, global mean temperature will increase by about 0.3 degrees Celsius per decade during the 21st century. They judge that global mean surface air temperature has increased by 0.3 to 0.6 degrees Celsius over the last 100 years, broadly consistent with prediction of climate models, but also of the same magnitude as natural climate variability. The unequivocal detection of the enhanced greenhouse effect is not likely for a decade or more. Topic. Supplementary report of 1992 The 1992 supplementary report was an update, requested in the context of the negotiations on the UNFCCC at the Earth Summit United Nations Conference on Environment and Development in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. The major conclusion was that research since 1990 did 
not affect our fundamental understanding of the science of the greenhouse effect and either confirm or do not justify alteration of the major conclusions of the first IPCC scientific assessment." It noted that transient time -dependent simulations, which had been very preliminary in the FAR, were now improved, but did not include aerosol or ozone changes. Second assessment report Climate Change 1995, the IPCC Second Assessment Report was finished in 1996. It is split into four parts A synthesis to help interpret UNFCCC Article 2. The Science of Climate Change WGI. Impacts, Adaptations and Mitigation of Climate Change WG2. Economic and Social Dimensions of Climate Change WG3. Each of the last three parts was completed by a separate working group, and each has a Summary for Policymakers SPM that represents a consensus of national representatives. The SPM of the WGI report contains headings Greenhouse gas concentrations have continued to increase Anthropogenic aerosols tend to produce negative radiative forcings Climate has changed over the past century air temperature has increased by between 0.3 and 0.6 degrees Celsius since the late 19th century, this estimate has not significantly changed since the 1990 report. The balance of evidence suggests a discernible human influence on global climate considerable progress since the 1990 report in distinguishing between natural and anthropogenic influences on climate, because of, including aerosols, coupled models, pattern-based studies. Climate is expected to continue to change in the future increasing realism of simulations increases confidence, important uncertainties remain but are taken into account in the range of model projections. There are still many uncertainties estimates of future emissions and biogeochemical cycling, models, instrument data for model testing, assessment of variability, and detection studies. Topic. Third assessment report The third assessment report TAR was completed in 2001 and consists of four reports, three of them from its working groups. Working Group 1, The Scientific Basis Working Group 2, Impacts, Adaptation and Vulnerability Working Group 3, Mitigation Synthesis report A number of the TARS conclusions are given quantitative estimates of how probable it is that they are correct, e.g., greater than 66% probability of being correct. These are Bayesian probabilities, which are based on an expert assessment of all the available evidence. Robust findings of the TAR synthesis report include Observations show Earth's surface is warming. Globally, 1990's very likely warmest decade in instrumental record. Atmospheric concentrations of anthropogenic i.e., human-emitted greenhouse gases have increased substantially. Since the mid-20th century, most of the observed warming is likely greater than 66% probability, based on expert judgment due to human activities. Projections based on the Special Report on Emission Scenarios suggest warming over the 21st century at a more rapid rate than that experienced for at least the last 10,000 years. Projected climate change will have beneficial and adverse effects on both environmental and socio-economic systems, but the larger the changes and the rate of change in climate, the more the adverse effects predominate. Ecosystems and species are vulnerable to climate change and other stresses as illustrated by observed impacts of recent regional temperature changes and some will be irreversibly damaged or lost. Greenhouse gas emission reduction mitigation actions would lessen the pressures on natural and human systems from climate change. Adaptation to the effects of climate change has the potential to reduce adverse effects of climate change and can often produce immediate ancillary benefits, but will not prevent all damages. An example of adaptation to climate change is building levees in response to sea level rise. Topic: <laughs> Comments on the tar. In 2001, 16 national science academies issued a joint statement on climate change. 
The joint statement was made by the Australian Academy of Science, the Royal Flemish Academy of Belgium for Science and the Arts, the Brazilian Academy of Sciences, the Royal Society of Canada, the Caribbean Academy of Sciences, the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the French Academy of Sciences, the German Academy of Natural Scientists Leopoldina, the Indian National Science Academy, the Indonesian Academy of Sciences, the Royal Irish Academy, Academia Nazionale dei Lincei, Italy, the Academy of Sciences. Malaysia, the Academy Council of the Royal Society of New Zealand, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, and the Royal Society UK. The statement, also published as an editorial in the journal Science, stated we support the TARS conclusion that it is at least 90% certain that temperatures will continue to rise, with average global surface temperature projected to increase by between 1.4 and 5.8 degrees Celsius above 1990 levels by 2100. The TAR has also been endorsed by the Canadian Foundation for Climate and Atmospheric Sciences, Canadian Meteorological and Oceanographic Society, and European Geosciences Union refer to endorsements of the IPCC. In 2001, the U.S. National Research Council USNRC produced a report that assessed Working Group 1's WGI contribution to the TAR. USNRC 2001 generally agrees with the WGI assessment, and describes the full WGI report as an "...admirable summary of research activities in climate science." IPCC author Richard Lindzen has made a number of criticisms of the TAR. Among his criticisms, Lindzen has stated that the WGI Summary for Policymakers SPM does not faithfully summarize the full WGI report. For example, Lindzen states that the SPM understates the uncertainty associated with climate models. John Houghton, who was a co-chair of TAR WGI, has responded to Lindzen's criticisms of the SPM. Houghton has stressed that the SPM is agreed upon by delegates from many of the world's governments, and that any changes to the SPM must be supported by scientific evidence. IPCC author Kevin Trenberth has also commented on the WGI SPM. Trenberth has stated that during the drafting of the WGI SPM, some government delegations attempted to blunt, and perhaps obfuscate, the messages in the report." However, Trenberth concludes that the SPM is a "...reasonably balanced summary." USNRC 2001 concluded that the WGI SPM and technical summary are "...consistent," with the full WGI report. USNRC 2001 stated, The full WGI report is adequately summarized in the technical summary. The full WGI report and its technical summary are not specifically directed at policy. The summary for policymakers reflects less emphasis on communicating the basis for uncertainty and a stronger emphasis on areas of major concern associated with human-induced climate change. This change in emphasis appears to be the result of a summary process in which scientists work with policymakers on the document. Written responses from U.S. coordinating and lead scientific authors to the committee indicate, however, that a no changes were made without the consent of the convening lead authors this group represents a fraction of the lead and contributing authors and b most changes that did occur lacked significant impact. Topic. Fourth assessment report The fourth assessment report AR4 was published in 2007. Like previous assessment reports, it consists of four reports Working Group 1 – The Physical Science Basis Working Group 2 – Impacts, Adaptation and Vulnerability Working Group 3 – Mitigation Synthesis report people from over 130 countries contributed to the IPCC fourth assessment report, which took six years to produce. Contributors to AR4 included more than 2,500 scientific expert reviewers, more than 800 contributing authors, and more than 450 lead authors. Robust findings of the synthesis report include Warming of the climate system is unequivocal, as is now evident from observations of increases in global average air and ocean temperatures, widespread melting of snow and ice and rising global average sea level. Most of the global average warming over the past 50 years is very likely, greater than 90% probability, based on expert judgment due to human activities. 
impacts of climate change will very likely increase due to increased frequencies and intensities of some extreme weather events. Anthropogenic warming and sea level rise would continue for centuries even if GHG emissions were to be reduced sufficiently for GHG concentrations to stabilize, due to the time scales associated with climate processes and feedbacks. Stabilization of atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations is discussed in climate change mitigation. Some planned adaptation of human activities is occurring now, more extensive adaptation is required to reduce vulnerability to climate change. Unmitigated climate change would, in the long term, be likely to exceed the capacity of natural, managed and human systems to adapt. Many impacts of climate change can be reduced, delayed or avoided by mitigation. Global warming projections from AR4 are shown below. The projections apply to the end of the 21st century 2090-99, relative to temperatures at the end of the 20th century 1980-99. Add 0.7 degrees Celsius to projections to make them relative to pre-industrial levels instead of 1980-99. Descriptions of the greenhouse gas emission scenarios can be found in special report on emission scenarios. Likely means greater than 66% probability of being correct, based on expert judgment. Topic. Response to AR4 Several science academies have referred to and or reiterated some of the conclusions of AR4. These include Joint statements made in 2007, 2008 and 2009 by the Science Academies of Brazil, China, India, Mexico, South Africa and the G8 nations the G8 plus 5. Publications by the Australian Academy of Science A joint statement made in 2007 by the Network of African Science Academies a statement made in 2010 by the Inter-Academy Medical Panel This statement has been signed by 43 scientific academies. The Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency PBL, et al., 2009, 2010 has carried out two reviews of AR4. These reviews are generally supportive of AR4's conclusions. PBL 2010 makes some recommendations to improve the IPCC process. A literature assessment by the U.S. National Research Council USNRC, 2010, concludes, climate change is occurring, is caused largely by human activities, and poses significant risks for, and in many cases is already affecting, a broad range of human and natural systems emphasis in original text. This conclusion is based on a substantial array of scientific evidence, including recent work, and is consistent with the conclusions of recent assessments by the U.S. Global Change Research Program. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's Fourth Assessment Report and other assessments of the state of scientific knowledge on climate change. Some errors have been found in the IPCCAR 4 Working Group 2 report. Two errors include the melting of Himalayan glaciers see later section, and Dutch land area that is below sea level. Topic. Fifth assessment report The IPCC's fifth assessment report AR5 was completed in 2014. AR5 followed the same general format as of AR4, with three working group reports and a synthesis report. The Working Group 1 report WG1 was published in September 2013. Conclusions of AR5 are summarized below. Working Group 1. Warming of the climate system is unequivocal, and since the 1950s, many of the observed changes are unprecedented over decades to millennia. Atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide have increased to levels unprecedented in at least the last 800,000 years. Human influence on the climate system is clear. It is extremely likely, 95 to 100 percent probability, that human influence was the dominant cause of global warming between 1951 to 2010. Working Group 2. Increasing magnitudes of global warming increase the likelihood of severe, pervasive, and irreversible impacts. 
A first step towards adaptation to future climate change is reducing vulnerability and exposure to present climate variability. The overall risks of climate change impacts can be reduced by limiting the rate and magnitude of climate change. Working Group 3 Without new policies to mitigate climate change, projections suggest an increase in global mean temperature in 2100 of 3.7 to 4.8 degrees Celsius, relative to pre-industrial levels median values, the range is 2.5 to 7.8 degrees Celsius including climate uncertainty. The current trajectory of global greenhouse gas emissions is not consistent with limiting global warming to below 1.5 or 2 degrees Celsius, relative to pre-industrial levels. Pledges made as part of the Cancun agreements are broadly consistent with cost-effective scenarios that give a likely chance 66 to 100% probability of limiting global warming in 2100 to below 3 degrees Celsius, relative to pre-industrial levels. Topic. Representative concentration pathways Projections in AR5 are based on representative concentration pathways RCPs. The RCPs are consistent with a wide range of possible changes in future anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions. Projected changes in global mean surface temperature and sea level are given in the main RCP article. Topic. Special reports In addition to climate assessment reports, the IPCC is publishing special reports on specific topics. The preparation and approval process for all IPCC special reports follows the same procedures as for IPCC assessment reports. In the year 2011 two IPCC special report were finalized, the Special Report on Renewable Energy Sources and Climate Change Mitigation and the Special Report on Managing Risks of Extreme Events and Disasters to Advance Climate Change Adaptation Both special reports were requested by governments. Topic. Special Report on Emission Scenarios The Special Report on Emission Scenarios is a report by the IPCC which was published in 2000. The SRES contains scenarios of future changes in emissions of greenhouse gases and sulfur dioxide. One of the uses of the SRES scenarios is to project future changes in climate, e.g., changes in global mean temperature. The SRES scenarios were used in the IPCC's third and fourth assessment reports. The SRES scenarios are baseline or reference scenarios, which means that they do not take into account any current or future measures to limit greenhouse gas (GHG) emissions, e.g., the Kyoto Protocol to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. SRES emissions projections are broadly comparable in range to the baseline projections that have been developed by the scientific community. Topic. Comments on the SRES There have been a number of comments on the SRES. Parson et al. 2007 stated that the SRES represented a substantial advance from prior scenarios. At the same time, there have been criticisms of the SRES. The most prominently publicized criticism of SRES focused on the fact that all but one of the participating models compared gross domestic product (GDP) across regions using market exchange rates (MER) instead of the more correct purchasing power parity (PPP) approach. This criticism is discussed in the main SRES article. Topic Special Report on Renewable Energy Sources and Climate Change Mitigation This report assesses existing literature on renewable energy commercialization for the mitigation of climate change. It was published in 2012 and covers the six most important renewable energy technologies, as well as their integration into present and future energy systems. It also takes into consideration the environmental and social consequences associated with these technologies, the cost and strategies to overcome technical as well as non-technical obstacles to their application and diffusion. The full report in PDF form is found here. 
More than 130 authors from all over the world contributed to the preparation of IPCC Special Report on Renewable Energy Sources and Climate Change Mitigation on a voluntary basis, not to mention more than 100 scientists, who served as contributing authors. <laughs> Special Report on Managing the Risks of Extreme Events and Disasters to Advance Climate Change Adaptation The report was published in 2012. It assesses the effect that climate change has on the threat of natural disasters and how nations can better manage an expected change in the frequency of occurrence and intensity of severe weather patterns. It aims to become a resource for decision makers to prepare more effectively for managing the risks of these events. A potentially important area for consideration is also the detection of trends in extreme events and the attribution of these trends to human influence. The full report, 594 pages in length, may be found here in PDF form. More than 80 authors, 19 review editors, and more than 100 contributing authors from all over the world contributed to the preparation of SREX. Methodology reports Within IPCC the National Greenhouse Gas Inventory Program develops methodologies to estimate emissions of greenhouse gases. This has been undertaken since 1991 by the IPCC WGI in close collaboration with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and the International Energy Agency. The objectives of the National Greenhouse Gas Inventory Program are to develop and refine an internationally agreed methodology and software for the calculation and reporting of national greenhouse gas emissions and removals, and to encourage the widespread use of this methodology by countries participating in the IPCC and by signatories of the UNFCCC. Topic. Revised 1996 IPCC Guidelines for National Greenhouse Gas Inventories The 1996 Guidelines for National Greenhouse Gas Investories provide the methodological basis for the estimation of national greenhouse gas emissions inventories. Over time these guidelines have been completed with good practice reports, good practice guidance and uncertainty management in national greenhouse gas inventories and good practice guidance for land use, land use change and forestry. The 1996 guidelines and the two good practice reports are to be used by parties to the UNFCCC and to the Kyoto Protocol in their annual submissions of national greenhouse gas inventories. 2006 IPCC guidelines for national greenhouse gas inventories The 2006 IPCC Guidelines for National Greenhouse Gas Inventories is the latest version of these emission estimation methodologies, including a large number of default emission factors. Although the IPCC prepared this new version of the guidelines on request of the parties to the UNFCCC, the methods have not yet been officially accepted for use in national greenhouse gas emissions reporting under the UNFCCC and the Kyoto Protocol. Topic. Special Report on Global Warming of 1.5 Degrees Celsius SR15. When the Paris Agreement was adopted, the UNFCC invited the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change to write a special report on how can humanity prevent the global temperature rise more than 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial level. The completed report, Special Report on Global Warming of 1.5 Degrees Celsius SR15, was released on October 8, 2018. Its full title is, Global Warming of 1.5 Degrees Celsius, an IPCC Special Report on the Impacts of Global Warming of 1.5 Degrees Celsius Above Pre-Industrial Levels and Related Global Greenhouse Gas Emission Pathways, in the Context of Strengthening the Global Response to the Threat of Climate Change, Sustainable Development, and Efforts to Eradicate Poverty. The finished report summarizes the findings of scientists, showing that maintaining a temperature rise to below 1.5 degrees Celsius remains possible, but only through "...rapid and far-reaching transitions in energy, land, urban and infrastructure and industrial systems." 
Meeting the Paris target of 1.5 degrees Celsius (2.7 degrees Fahrenheit) is possible but would require deep emissions reductions, rapid, far-reaching and unprecedented changes in all aspects of society. In order to achieve the 1.5 degrees Celsius target, CO2 emissions must decline by 45% relative to 2010 levels by 2030, reaching net zero by around 2050. Deep reductions in non-CO2 emissions such as nitrous oxide and methane will also be required to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Under the pledges of the countries entering the Paris Accord, a sharp rise of 3.1 to 3.7 degrees Celsius is still expected to occur by 2100. Holding this rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius avoids the worst effects of a rise by even 2 degrees Celsius. However, a warming of even 1.5 degrees will still result in large-scale drought, famine, heat stress, species die-off, loss of entire ecosystems, and loss of habitable land, throwing more than 100 million into poverty. Effects will be most drastic in arid regions including the Middle East and the Sahel in Africa, where fresh water will remain in some areas following a 1.5 degrees Celsius rise in temperatures but are expected to dry up completely if the rise reaches 2 degrees Celsius. Activities The IPCC concentrates its activities on the tasks allotted to it by the relevant WMO Executive Council and UNEP Governing Council resolutions and decisions as well as on actions in support of the UNFCCC process. While the preparation of the assessment reports is a major IPCC function, it also supports other activities, such as the Data Distribution Center and the National Greenhouse Gas Inventories Program, required under the UNFCCC. This involves publishing default emission factors, which are factors used to derive emissions estimates based on the levels of fuel consumption, industrial production and so on. The IPCC also often answers inquiries from the UNFCCC Subsidiary Body for Scientific and Technological Advice SBSTA. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Nobel Peace Prize. In December 2007, the IPCC was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for their efforts to build up and disseminate greater knowledge about man-made climate change, and to lay the foundations for the measures that are needed to counteract such change." The award is shared with former U.S. Vice President Al Gore for his work on climate change and the documentary An Inconvenient Truth. Criticisms <coughs> 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 There is widespread support for the IPCC in the scientific community, which is reflected in publications by other scientific bodies and experts. However, criticisms of the IPCC have been made. Since 2010, the IPCC has come under yet unparalleled public and political scrutiny. The global IPCC consensus approach has been challenged internally and externally with the 2009 Climatic Research Unit email controversy, Climate Gate, an important but not sole threshold. It has been deemed an information monopoly with results for both the quality and the impact of the IPCC work as such. Topic. Projected date of melting of Himalayan glaciers A paragraph in the 2007 Working Group 2 report, Impacts, Adaptation and Vulnerability. Chapter 10 included a projection that Himalayan glaciers could disappear by 2035, Glaciers in the Himalaya are receding faster than in any other part of the world see Table 10.9 and, if the present rate continues, the likelihood of them disappearing by the year 2035 and perhaps sooner is very high if the Earth keeps warming at the current rate. Its total area will likely shrink from the present 500,000 to 100,000 square kilometers by the year 2035 WWF, 2005. This projection was not included in the final summary for policymakers. The IPCC has since acknowledged that the date is incorrect, while reaffirming that the conclusion in the final summary was robust. They expressed regret for the poor application of well-established IPCC procedures in this instance. The date of 2035 has been correctly quoted by the IPCC from the WWF report, which has misquoted its own source, an ICSI report. Variations of snow and ice in the past and at present on a global and regional scale. 
Rajendra K. Pachori responded in an interview with Science. Topic. Overstatement of effects Former IPCC chairman Robert Watson said, regarding the Himalayan glacier's estimation, "...the mistakes all appear to have gone in the direction of making it seem like climate change is more serious by overstating the impact. That is worrying. The IPCC needs to look at this trend in the errors and ask why it happened." Martin Perry, a climate expert who had been co-chair of the IPCC Working Group 2, said that, "...what began with a single unfortunate error over Himalayan glaciers has become a clamor without substance," and the IPCC had investigated the other alleged mistakes, which were, "...generally unfounded and also marginal to the assessment." <laughs> Emphasis of the "...hockey stick," graph The third assessment report TAR prominently featured a graph labeled Millennial Northern Hemisphere Temperature Reconstruction based on a 1999 paper by Michael E Mann, Raymond S Bradley and Malcolm K Hughes MBH 99 which has been referred to as the hockey stick graph This graph extended the similar graph in figure 3.20 from the IPCC second assessment report of 1995, and differed from a schematic in the first assessment report that lacked temperature units, but appeared to depict larger global temperature variations over the past 1,000 years, and higher temperatures during the medieval warm period than the mid-20th century. The schematic was not an actual plot of data, and was based on a diagram of temperatures in central England, with temperatures increased on the basis of documentary evidence of medieval vineyards in England. Even with this increase, the maximum it showed for the medieval warm period did not reach temperatures recorded in central England in 2007. The MBH 99 finding was supported by cited reconstructions by Jones et al., 1998 Pollock, Huang and Shen 1998, Crowley and Lowry 2000 and Briffa 2000, using differing data and methods. The Jones et al. and Briffa reconstructions were overlaid with the MBH 99 reconstruction in Figure 2.21 of the IPCC report. These studies were widely presented as demonstrating that the current warming period is exceptional in comparison to temperatures between 1000 and 1900, and the MBH 99 based graph featured in publicity. Even at the draft stage, this finding was disputed by contrarians. In May 2000, Fred Singer's Science and Environmental Policy Project held a press event on Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C., featuring comments on the graph. Wijorn Carlin and Singer argued against the graph at a United States Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation hearing on 18 July 2000. Contrarian John Lawrence Daly featured a modified version of the IPCC 1990 schematic, which he misidentified as appearing in the IPCC 1995 report, and argued that overturning its own previous view in the 1995 report, the IPCC presented the hockey stick as the new orthodoxy with hardly an apology or explanation for the abrupt U-turn since its 1995 report. Criticism of the MBH 99 reconstruction in a review paper, which was quickly discredited in the Soon and Balianas controversy, was picked up by the Bush administration, and a Senate speech by U.S. Republican Senator James Inhofe alleged that man-made global warming is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people. The data and methodology used to produce the hockey stick graph was criticized in papers by Stephen McIntyre and Ross McKittrick, and in turn the criticisms in these papers were examined by other studies and comprehensively refuted by Wall and Ammon 2007, which showed errors in the methods used by McIntyre and McKittrick. On 23 June 2005, Rep. Joe Barton, chairman of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce wrote joint letters with Ed Whitfield, chairman of the Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations demanding full records on climate research, as well as personal information about their finances and careers, from Mann, Bradley and Hughes. Sherwood Bullard, chairman of the House Science Committee, said this was a misguided and illegitimate investigation apparently aimed at intimidating scientists, and at his request the U.S. National Academy of Sciences arranged for its National Research Council to set up a special investigation. The National Research Council's report agreed that there were some statistical failings, but these had little effect on the graph, which was generally correct. 
In a 2006 letter to Nature, Mann, Bradley, and Hughes pointed out that their original article had said that more widespread high-resolution data are needed before more confident conclusions can be reached and that the uncertainties were the point of the article. The IPCC Fourth Assessment Report AR4, published in 2007 featured a graph showing 12 proxy-based temperature reconstructions, including the three highlighted in the 2001 Third Assessment Report Tar, Mann, Bradley and Hughes 1999 as before, Jones et al. 1998 and Briffa 2000 had both been calibrated by newer studies. In addition, analysis of the medieval warm period cited reconstructions by Crowley and Lowry 2000 as cited in the TAR and Osborne and Briffa 2006. Ten of these 14 reconstructions covered 1,000 years or longer. Most reconstructions shared some data series, particularly tree ring data, but newer reconstructions used additional data and covered a wider area, using a variety of statistical methods. The section discussed the divergence problem affecting certain tree ring data. Topic conservative nature of IPCC reports Some critics have contended that the IPCC reports tend to be conservative by consistently underestimating the pace and impacts of global warming, and report only the lowest common denominator findings. On 1 February 2007, the eve of the publication of IPCC's major report on climate, a study was published suggesting that temperatures and sea levels have been rising at or above the maximum rates proposed during the last IPCC report in 2001. The study compared IPCC 2001 projections on temperature and sea level change with observations. Over the six years studied, the actual temperature rise was near the top end of the range given by IPCC's 2001 projection, and the actual sea level rise was above the top of the range of the IPCC projection. Another example of scientific research which suggests that previous estimates by the IPCC, far from overstating dangers and risks, have actually understated them is a study on projected rises in sea levels. When the researchers' analysis was applied to the possible scenarios outlined by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, the researchers found that in 2100 sea levels would be 0.5 to 1.4 meters 50 to 140 centimeters above 1990 levels. These values are much greater than the 9 to 88 centimeters as projected by the IPCC itself in its third assessment report, published in 2001. This may have been due, in part, to the expanding human understanding of climate. Greg Holland from the National Center for Atmospheric Research, who reviewed a multimeter sea level rise study by Jim Hansen, noted there is no doubt that the sea level rise, within the IPCC, is a very conservative number, so the truth lies somewhere between IPCC and Jim. In reporting criticism by some scientists that IPCC's then impending January 2007 report understates certain risks, particularly sea level rises, and AP story quoted Stefan Ramesdorf, professor of physics and oceanography at Potsdam University as saying, in a way, it is one of the strengths of the IPCC to be very conservative and cautious and not overstate any climate change risk. In his December 2006 book, Hell and High Water, Global Warming, and in an interview on Fox News on 31 January 2007, energy expert Joseph Rahm noted that the IPCC fourth assessment report is already out of date and omits recent observations and facts factors contributing to global warming, such as the release of greenhouse gases from thawing tundra. Political influence on the IPCC has been documented by the release of a memo by ExxonMobil to the Bush administration, and its effects on the IPCC's leadership. The memo led to strong Bush administration lobbying, evidently at the behest of ExxonMobil, to oust Robert Watson, a climate scientist, from the IPCC chairmanship, and to have him replaced by Pachori, who was seen at the time as more mild-mannered and industry-friendly. Topic. IPCC processes Michael Oppenheimer, a longtime participant in the IPCC and coordinating lead author of the Fifth Assessment Report conceded in Science Magazine's State of the Planet 2008-2009 some limitations of the IPCC consensus approach and asks for concurring, smaller assessments of special problems instead of the large-scale approach as in the previous IPCC assessment reports. It has become more important to provide a broader exploration of uncertainties. 
Others see as well mixed blessings of the drive for consensus within the IPCC process and ask to include dissenting or minority positions or to improve statements about uncertainties. The IPCC process on climate change and its efficiency and success has been compared with dealings with other environmental challenges, compare ozone depletion and global warming. In case of the ozone depletion global regulation based on the Montreal Protocol has been successful, in case of climate change, the Kyoto Protocol failed. The ozone case was used to assess the efficiency of the IPCC process. The lockstep situation of the IPCC is having built a broad science consensus while states and governments still follow different, if not opposing goals. The underlying linear model of policy making of more knowledge we have, the better the political response will be is being doubted. According to Sheldon Unger's comparison with global warming, the actors in the ozone depletion case had a better understanding of scientific ignorance and uncertainties. The ozone case communicated to lay persons, with easy to understand bridging metaphors derived from the popular culture, and related to immediate risks with everyday relevance, while the public opinion on climate change sees no imminent danger. The stepwise mitigation of the ozone layer challenge was based as well on successfully reducing regional burden sharing conflicts. In case of the IPCC conclusions and the failure of the Kyoto Protocol, varying regional cost-benefit analysis and burden-sharing conflicts with regard to the distribution of emission reductions remain an unsolved problem. In the UK, a report for a House of Lords committee asked to urge the IPCC to involve better assessments of costs and benefits of climate change but the stern review ordered by the UK government made a stronger argument in favour to combat human-made climate change. Topic. Outdatedness of reports Since the IPCC does not carry out its own research, it operates on the basis of scientific papers and independently documented results from other scientific bodies, and its schedule for producing reports requires a deadline for submissions prior to the report's final release. In principle, this means that any significant new evidence or events that change our understanding of climate science between this deadline and publication of an IPCC report cannot be included. In an area of science where our scientific understanding is rapidly changing, this has been raised as a serious shortcoming in a body which is widely regarded as the ultimate authority on the science. However, there has generally been a steady evolution of key findings and levels of scientific confidence from one assessment report to the next. The submission deadlines for the fourth assessment report AR4 differed for the reports of each working group. Deadlines for the working group one report were adjusted during the drafting and review process in order to ensure that reviewers had access to unpublished material being cited by the authors. The final deadline for cited publications was the 24th of July 2006. The final WGI report was released on 30 April 2007 and the final AR4 synthesis report was released on 17 November 2007. Rajendra Pachori, the IPCC chair, admitted at the launch of this report that since the IPCC began work on it, scientists have recorded much stronger trends in climate change. Like the unforeseen dramatic melting of polar ice in the summer of 2007, and added, that means you better start with intervention much earlier. Topic. Burden on participating scientists Scientists who participate in the IPCC assessment process do so without any compensation other than the normal salaries they receive from their home institutions. The process is labor-intensive, diverting time and resources from participating scientists' research programs. Concerns have been raised that the large uncompensated time commitment and disruption to their own research may discourage qualified scientists from participating. Topic. Lack of error correction after publication In May 2010, Pachori noted that the IPCC currently had no process for responding to errors or flaws once it issued a report. The problem, according to Pachori, was that once a report was issued the panels of scientists producing the reports were disbanded. Topic. Proposed organizational overhaul 
In February 2010, in response to controversies regarding claims in the fourth assessment report, five climate scientists, all contributing or lead IPCC report authors, wrote in the journal Nature calling for changes to the IPCC. They suggested a range of new organizational options, from tightening the selection of lead authors and contributors, to dumping it in favor of a small permanent body, or even turning the whole climate science assessment process into a moderated, living, Wikipedia IPCC. Other recommendations included that the panel employ a full-time staff and remove government oversight from its processes to avoid political interference. Topic. Reframing of scientific research The 2018 report What Lies Beneath by the Breakthrough, National Center for Climate Restoration, with contributions from Kevin Anderson, James Hansen, Michael E. Mann, Michael Oppenheimer, Naomi Oreskes, Stefan Ramestorf, Eric Rignot, Hans Joachim Schellnhuber, Kevin Trenberth, and others, urges the IPCC, the wider UNFCCC negotiations, and national policy makers to change their approach. The authors note. We urgently require a reframing of scientific research within an existential risk management framework. Topic: Interacademy Council Review. In March 2010, at the invitation of the United Nations Secretary General and the Chair of the IPCC, the Interacademy Council (IAC) was asked to review the IPCC's processes for developing its reports. The IAC panel, chaired by Harold Taffler Shapiro, convened on the 14th of May 2010 and released its report on the 1st of September 2010. The IAC found that the IPCC assessment process has been successful overall. The panel, however, made seven formal recommendations for improving the IPCC's assessment process, including establish an executive committee, elect an executive director whose term would only last for one assessment. Encourage review editors to ensure that all reviewer comments are adequately considered and genuine controversies are adequately reflected in the assessment reports. Adopt a better process for responding to reviewer comments. Working groups should use a qualitative level of understanding scale in the summary for policy makers and technical summary. Quantitative probabilities as in the likelihood scale should be used to describe the probability of well-defined outcomes only when there is sufficient evidence. And implement a communications plan that emphasizes transparency and establish guidelines for who can speak on behalf of the organization. The panel also advised that the IPCC avoid appearing to advocate specific policies in response to its scientific conclusions. Commenting on the IAC report, Nature News noted that the proposals were met with a largely favorable response from climate researchers who are eager to move on after the media scandals and credibility challenges that have rocked the United Nations body during the past nine months. Topic: <laughs> Archiving. Papers and electronic files of certain working groups of the IPCC, including reviews and comments on drafts of their assessment reports, are archived at the Environmental Science and Public Policy Archives in the Harvard Library. <laughs> Endorsements of the IPCC Various scientific bodies have issued official statements endorsing and concurring with the findings of the IPCC. Joint Science Academy's statement of 2001, "...the work of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC represents the consensus of the international scientific community on climate change science. We recognize IPCC as the world's most reliable source of information on climate change and its causes, and we endorse its method of achieving this consensus." Canadian Foundation for Climate and Atmospheric Sciences we concur with the Climate Science Assessment of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC in 2001. We endorse the conclusions of the IPCC assessment. Canadian Meteorological and Oceanographic Society
CMOS endorses the process of periodic climate science assessment carried out by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and supports the conclusion, in its third assessment report, which states that the balance of evidence suggests a discernible human influence on global climate. European Geosciences Union. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is the main representative of the global scientific community. The IPCC Third Assessment Report represents the state of the art of climate science supported by the major science academies around the world and by the vast majority of scientific researchers and investigations as documented by the peer reviewed scientific literature. International Council for Science ICSU. The IPCC Fourth Assessment Report represents the most comprehensive international scientific assessment ever conducted. This assessment reflects the current collective knowledge on the climate system, its evolution to date, and its anticipated future development. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration USA. Internationally, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC is the most senior and authoritative body providing scientific advice to global policy makers. United States National Research Council. The IPCC Third Assessment Report conclusion that most of the observed warming of the last 50 years is likely to have been due to the increase in greenhouse gas concentrations accurately reflects the current thinking of the scientific community on this issue. Network of African Science Academies. The IPCC should be congratulated for the contribution it has made to public understanding of the nexus that exists between energy, climate and sustainability. Royal Meteorological Society, in response to the release of the fourth assessment report, referred to the IPCC as the world's best climate scientists. Stratigraphy Commission of the Geological Society of London. The most authoritative assessment of climate change in the near future is provided by the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. Topic see also Four Degrees and Beyond International Climate Conference Avoiding Dangerous Climate Change Indian Network on Climate Change Assessment Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services List of Authors from Climate Change 2007, The Physical Science Basis Post-Kyoto Protocol Negotiations on Greenhouse Gas Emissions Robust Decision Making Topic Notes Topic References Topic Citations Topic Sources Academia Brasileira de Ciencias, et al., the 16th 16th of May 2007, Sustainability, Energy Efficiency and Climate Protection. A joint statement made by the Science Academies of the G8 Nations and Brazil, China, India, Mexico and South Africa the G8 plus 5 PDF, London, UK, Royal Society. Statement website, Academia Brasileira de Ciencias, et al., 10 June 2008, Climate Change Adaptation and the Transition to a Low-Carbon Society. A joint statement made by the Science Academies of the G8 Nations and Brazil, China, India, Mexico and South Africa the G8 plus 5 PDF, London, UK, Royal Society. Statement website, Academia Brasileira de Ciencias, et al., 1 May 2009, Climate Change and the Transformation of Energy Technologies for a Low-Carbon Future. A joint statement made by the Science Academies of the G8 Nations and Brazil, China, India, Mexico and South Africa the G8 plus 5 PDF, London, UK, Royal Society. Statement website, Australian Academy of Science N. D. Science Policy, Climate Change, The Australian Academy of Sciences Comments on the Joint Science Academies Statement, Climate Change Adaptation and the Transition to a Low Carbon Society, Canberra, Australian Academy of Science Australian Academy of Science August 2010, The Science of Climate Change, Questions and Answers, Canberra, Australian Academy of Science, ISBN 0858472864, archived from from the original on the 12th of August 2013 low resolution 2 megabits or high resolution pdf 25 megabits economic affairs committee the 21st of June 2005 the economics of climate change the second report of the 2005 2006 session produced by the UK parliament house of lords economics affairs select committee london uk the stationary office limited by order of the house of lords 
High resolution PDF versions HL12I report HL12II evidence IAC the 1st of October 2010 climate change assessments review of the processes and procedures of the IPCC Interacademy Council IAC ISBN 9789069846170 archived from the original on the 2nd of January 2014 retrieved the 27th of January 2014 CS1 maint bot Original URL status unknown link IAMP 2010 Inter Academy Medical Panel IAMP statement on the health co benefits of policies to tackle climate change Trieste Italy Inter Academy Panel IAP Secretariat hosted by the World Academy of Sciences TWAS IPCC September 2013 IPCC AR5 leaflet PDF retrieved the 28th of November 2013 IPCC AR5 WG3 2014 Edenhofer, O. et al., eds., Climate Change 2014, Mitigation of Climate Change. Contribution of Working Group 3 WG3 to the Fifth Assessment Report AR5 of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, Cambridge University Press, archived from the original on 29 October 2014 CS1 maint, bot, original URL status unknown link. Archived IPCC AR5 WG2A 2014, Field, CB, et al., eds., Climate Change 2014, Impacts, Adaptation, and Vulnerability, Part A, Global and Sectoral Aspects. Contribution of Working Group 2 WG2 to the Fifth Assessment Report AR5 of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, Cambridge University Press, archived from the original on 28 April 2016 CS1 maint, bot, original URL status unknown link. Archived IPCC AR5 WG1 2013, Stalker, TF, et al., eds., Climate Change 2013, The Physical Science Basis. Working Group 1 WG1 Contribution to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC Fifth Assessment Report AR5 Cambridge University Press Climate Change 2013 Working Group 1 website IPCC AR4 SYR 2007 Core Writing Team Pachori RK Reisinger A EDS Climate Change 2007 Synthesis Report SYR Contribution of Working Groups I, II and III to the Fourth Assessment Report AR4 of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Geneva, Switzerland, IPCC. ISBN 92-9169-122-4, IPCC AR4 WG1 2007. Solomon, S., Chin, D., Manning, M., Chen, Z., Marquis, M., Averett, K. B., Tigner, M., Miller, H. L., E. D. S. Climate Change 2007, The Physical Science Basis. Contribution of Working Group 1 to the Fourth Assessment Report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-88009-1, pb. 978-0-521-70596-7 IPCC AR4 WG2 2007. Perry, M. L., Kanziani, O. F., Palutikoff, J. P., Van der Linden, P. J., Hansen, C. E., E. D. S. Climate Change 2007, Impacts, Adaptation and Vulnerability. Contribution of Working Group 2 to the Fourth Assessment Report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-88010-7, pb. 978-0-521-70597-4 IPCC AR4 WG3 2007. Metz, B., Davidson, O. R., Bosch, P. R., Dave, R., Meyer, L. A., E. D. S. Climate Change 2007, Mitigation of Climate Change. Contribution of Working Group 3 to the Fourth Assessment Report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-88011-4 pb. 978-0-521-70598-1, IPCC TAR SYR 2001. Watson, R.T., The Core Writing Team, eds. Climate Change 2001, Synthesis Report. Climate Change 2001, Synthesis Report. 
Contribution of Working Groups I, II, and III to the Third Assessment Report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Cambridge University Press. Bibcode, 2002 ccsr.book W. ISBN 0-521-80770-0, pb. 0-521-01507-3 IPCC TAR WG1 2001. Houghton, J. T., Ding, Y., Griggs, D. J., Noguer, M., Van der Linden, P. J., Die, X., Maskell, K., Johnson, C. A., E. D. S. Climate Change 2001, The Scientific Basis. Contribution of Working Group 1 to the Third Assessment Report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-80767-0. Archived from the original on 30 March 2016, pb. 0 521 01495 6, IPCC TAR WG2. McCarthy, J.J., Kanziani, O.F., Leary, N.A., Dokin, D.J., White, K.S., E.D.S. Climate Change 2001 Impacts, Adaptation and Vulnerability. Contribution of Working Group 2 to the Third Assessment Report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-80768-9. Archived from the original on 14 May 2016. pb. 0-521-01500-6 IPCC TAR WG3, Davidson, Ogenlade, Swart, Rob, Pan, Jawa 2001, Metz, B, Davidson, O, Swart, R, Pan, J, E, D, S. Climate Change 2001, Mitigation, Climate Change 2001, Mitigation, Contribution of Working Group 3 to the Third Assessment Report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Cambridge University Press, Bibcode, 2001 CCM, Book, M, ISBN 0-521-80769-7, archived from the original on 27 February 2017, pb. 0-521-01502-2, IPCC SRE ES, 2000, Nikisenovic, N., Swart, R., E. D. S., Special Report on Emission Scenarios, a Special Report of Working Group 3 of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-80081-1, archived from the original book on 3 February 2017, 978-0521-80081-5, pb. 0-521-80493-0, 978-0. 0521804936 Also published in English HTML PDF on the IPCC website Summary for policymakers available in French Russian and Spanish IPCC SAR WG1 1996 Houghton, JT Mirafilio LG Calendar BA Harris N Kattenberg A Maskell K EDS Climate Change 1995, The Science of Climate Change. Contribution of Working Group 1 to the Second Assessment Report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-56433-6, pb. 0-521-56436-0, pdf, IPCC SAR WG3 1996. Bruce, J. P., Lee, H., Hates, E. F., E. D. S. Climate Change 1995, Economic and Social Dimensions of Climate Change PDF. Contribution of Working Group 3 WG3 to the Second Assessment Report SAR of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-56051-9 pb. 0-521-56854-4 ITGP, October 2010, 32nd session of the IPCC, held in Busan, IPCC 32, INF, 4, 27, IX.2010, Review of the IPCC Processes and Procedures, Notes on the Informal Task Group on Procedures ITGP, PDF, IPCC, archived from the 
original on the 6th of July 2013. Retrieved the 1st of February 2014. CS1 maint. Bot. Original URL status unknown. Link. Lambeck, K. The 7th of February 2007. Science policy on the edge of global calamity. Canberra, Australian Academy of Science. Archived from the original on the 6th of August 2013. Mindshausen, M. At all. November 2011. The RCP greenhouse gas concentrations and their extensions from 1765 to 2300 open access climatic change 109 1 to 2 213 to 241 doi 10.1007 per seconds 10584 0110156z NASAC 2007 Joint Statement by the Network of African Science Academies NASAC to the G8 on Sustainability, Energy Efficiency and Climate Change PDF, Nairobi, Kenya, NASAC Secretariat. Statement website, pages 2K Consortium the 21st of April 2013, Continental Scale Temperature Variability During the Past Two Millennia, Nature Geoscience, 6 5, 339-346, Bibcode, 2013-NASH.6-339P, doi, 10.1038, NGEO 1797-78 Researchers, Corresponding Author Daryl S. Kaufman, Parson, E., et al., July 2007, Global Change Scenarios their development and use. Sub-report 2.1b of Synthesis and Assessment Product 2.1 by the U.S. Climate Change Science Program and the Subcommittee on Global Change Research, Washington, D.C., USA, Department of Energy, Office of Biological and Environmental Research, archived from the original on 30 June 2013 PBL, et al., November 2009, News in Climate Science and Exploring Boundaries, a policy brief on developments since the IPCC AR4 report in 2007. A report by the Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency PBL, Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute KNMI, and Wageningen University and Research Centre WUR PDF, Bilthoven, Netherlands, PBL, archived from the original PDF on 1 May 2014. Report website, PBL, 5 July 2010, assessing an IPCC assessment. An analysis of statements on projected regional impacts in the 2007 report. A report by the Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency PBL, PDF, Bilthoven, Netherlands, PBL. Report website, RIVE, N, Jackson, B, Rado, D, Marsh, R. The 11th of June 2007. Complaint to Ofcom regarding the Great Global Warming Swindle. Final revision. Ofcom Swindle Complaint website. Also available as a PDF. Stern, N. 2006. Stern Review Report on the Economics of Climate Change Pre-Publication Edition London, UK, HM Treasury. Archived from the original on 7 April 2010. Retrieved 8 March 2017, UK Royal Society, Climate Change, A Summary of the Science PDF, London, Royal Society. Report website, USNRC 2001, Climate Change Science, An Analysis of Some Key Questions. A report by the Committee on the Science of Climate Change, U.S. National Research Council NRC, Washington, D.C., USA, National Academy Press, ISBN 0-309-07574-2, archived from the original on 5 June 2011 USNRC 2010, America's Climate Choices, Panel on Advancing the Science of Climate Change, a report by the U.S. National Research Council NRC, Washington, D.C., the National Academies Press, ISBN 0-309-14588-0, archived from the original on 29 May 2014 Further reading Agrawala, S. August 1998. Context and Early Origins of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Climatic Change. 39 605-620. doi, 10.1023, a, 1,005,315,532,386. Agrawala, S. August 1998. Structural and Process History of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Climatic Change. 39 4, 621-642. 
DOI 10.1023/a 1 trillion 5 billion 312 million 337 The World Bank Climate Change and Water Sector 2009 Water and Climate Change Understanding the Risks and Making Climate Smart Investment Decisions Retrieved the 31st of October 2013 Topic External links Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC Organization IPCC Principles PDF 8.38 kilobytes IPCC Publications IPCC 16 Years of Scientific Assessment in Support of the Climate Convention PDF 618 kilobytes IPCC AR4 WG1 report available for purchase Summaries for policymakers SPMs of the IPCC fourth assessment report Working Group 1 The Physical Science Basis PDF 3.67 megabytes Working Group 2 Impacts Adaptation and Vulnerability PDF 923 kilobytes Working Group 3 Mitigation of Climate Change PDF 631 kilobytes Papers of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Harvard College Library The collection of drafts review comments and other documents relating to the work of the Working Group 1 of the Assessment Report 4 a summary of the 5th Assessment Report WG1TS and of the 4th Assessment Report SPMs by GreenFacts.org The World Bank – Climate Change and Concerns over Water Resources The World Bank's Portal to Climate Change and Water Publications IPCC article at the Encyclopedia of Earth – General Overview of the IPCC Climate Change – What is the IPCC by Jean-Marc Jankovici Climate Change Freeview Video Interview 2006 Sherwood Rowland, Nobel Laureate 1995 for work on ozone depletion discusses climate change. Provided by the Vega Science Trust. Evolution of Climate Science in the IPCC Assessments, Understanding the 20th Century Climate Change. A video of a lecture given at Princeton University by Venkatachalam Ramaswamy, Acting Director and Senior Scientist, Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory GFDL, Professor in Geosciences and Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences, Princeton University. IPCC Data Distribution Center Climate Data and Guidance on its Use. <laughs>